Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Table Talk. And I have back with me, but I'm a little sad, Zach Wyatt. He's going to do his last Table Talk with us. Zach, glad to have you. Uh, Pastor Brad, it's so good to be with you. I know it's, I'm sad for me too, my final time, my final table talk with you. First, I want to say just what a fantastic host you've been and a friend, and, and uh, just uh, I've really enjoyed this time, but it is, a, it is a joy to be with you this last final time. Uh, Zach is transitioning out. He has been our interim pastor for a little over six months, and we have been so blessed to have him during this transition time. It's a difficult job, but God used you to do it well. Our new lead pastor, Billy Crystal, he brought the word, and if you didn't catch it in person just this past Sunday, or you didn't catch it live streamed, you can go to our uh, Facebook page, or you can go to our YouTube uh, channel, and you can find the message that he brought, powerful word about real change. But, you know, Zach, I thought what we do is maybe talk a little bit about the ministry that you have. Uh, you didn't just hang out with us as our interim pastor, although it was a great, great ministry you had in these last several months. But tell us a little bit about that main ministry you're involved with. Uh, I appreciate you asking that, Brad. So my, my history and ministry has been through student ministry. Uh, not unlike Billy, who has, uh, Pastor Billy's come to this church serving the last 18 years as a student pastor, just uh, uh, over the hill at Burning Bush Baptist for the last 18 years. And that's how he and I became close. Well, my history, I served for about 16 years in student ministry. And then about seven years ago, transitioned to the ministry I now serve. I serve as the director of Youth Leader Collective. Let me, let me break in right yeah. there. You know, uh, your work, what you've done um, has really affected a lot of people. Mm. I know you're going to describe the Youth Ministry Collective, but it has affected the life of Billy Crystal. It has affected the life of our own student pastor, Patrick. So, uh, man, I just had to say that because I know you're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that, Brad. And, and I, I stand on the shoulders of, of men like Tony Souter, who was in the pulpit the week before Billy Crystal. Tony Souter is the director of our parent ministry, 100 Years, and he was a mentor of mine when I was in youth ministry. And, and just a, a quick snapshot of who we are is we realize those in ministry, a lot of times they're pouring into their congregation. They're saying, hey, you need to be in community. You need to be in Sunday school. You need to be in small groups. We have to do this thing mm -hmm. together. But a lot of times in ministry, we can have all these pressures on us, like how many people are in seats? How's the budget looking? How much hype and noise are we creating? But who's checking in on us? Mm -hmm. Who, who, who's, who are we coming alongside? What kind of community do we have in us? And that's the role of Youth Leader Collective. If I could sum it up in one way is, how can we come alongside and help foster community so we connect, we coach, and we care mm. for youth pastors who are at the front lines of, of ministry, uh, ministering to the next generation? Wow, and that's great. And, and I realize the value of care, of coaching, of, of people pouring into my life. Um, when I was 16 years old was the first time a person began to pour into my life. And, and all through my life since then, I've realized the value of that. And, and even at my age now, it's not like, I don't need anybody, I know it all, but rather, I have someone who is pouring into my life. I have a group of people around me because I see the value in that. Um, give us an example maybe of, of some of the work that you do. Yeah, so uh, on a week to week basis, Almost every day I'm sitting across the table at breakfast, at coffee, at lunch from a youth pastor just saying, hey, tell me what's going on in your heart, not just your ministry. Tell me about your heart. How's your personal walk with God? How's your family life? How's your time with your spouse? How's your time with your kids? Uh, and then tell me about your ministry. Is there any way we can serve you in your ministry? And a lot of times those early questions about your heart and your personal with God, nobody's asking those questions. People think, well, you're in ministry. Everything should be okay. But oftentimes ministers, they need people to come alongside them and say, hey, how's your heart doing? How's your time in the word? How's your time with Jesus? So I'm doing that. That's my every day I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, we do a couple of events during the year. We have a big conference that we do actually coming up next, uh, next month in August, uh, Southeast Youth Leader Conference. 
And it's, a, it's our big event. We'll have 350 to 400 youth leaders from around the region that come in. And we just kind of pour in love, love on these youth pastors, encourage them. It's a low cost, but high quality event. Uh, just to try and love them and kind of prepare them for the next school year. Uh, and then we'll do, we do, we're launching a cohort next year where we'll have maybe 10 to 12 younger youth pastors that are kind of starting out uh, on, their, on their tracks and how can we uh, meet with them monthly and just kind of give them the, the tools necessary within community setting to help them uh, be better at their, at their, at their positions. Wow. And, and even though those events uh, are, are great, that very th- first thing that you started mm. with, that personal time where you asked that question, not how's your ministry doing, how are you doing? And, and I know we in ministry, we're defined by our job, but we shouldn't be. We should be defined by our walk with Christ. And that doesn't always translate well. And, and in our society, uh, you know, a Western society, one of the first questions we're asked is, what do you do? And, and we go to the professional side, but we don't ask, but who are you? What's happening in your heart? What's happening with you? So thank you for doing that in the lives of youth pastors. I was a youth pastor for over 25 years, so I see the value in that as you're seeking to do that. Uh, sum it up with one thing for us, Bill. Uh, Zach, that's sorry, right. yeah. I'm already in the new mode. Yeah, that's great, that's great. No, I, this past week, actually, I heard from uh, just another mentor of mine, and he said, you know, youth pastors, and this is just blanket statement across the board, but he said, you know, youth pastors are some of the least educated, least mentored, least trained. We put them in the bottom of the basement in the churches, but we hand them our most precious treasure. We hand them our most, you know, the, the future of the church, the future of our country. And, and so what can we do to say, we're going to come around you. We're going to love you. We're going to support you. We're going to send you to conferences. We're going to send you to training. We're going to get you the education you need to help you be uh, the most equipped. We're going to put volunteers around you and let you know we're not just isolating you over here uh, in this one building or, or wherever it is. And, and just letting you know we, we love you and we support you. And I, and I just say this too, church. Um, I think it's incredible that this church has called Pastor Billy Crystal, who has the, the experience in, in both student ministry and worship and just the heart of a pastor to come in. I've worked alongside him, served alongside him, and, and, and he has been uh, giving me so much wisdom. I think he is going to be a, a, just an incredible fit here. So excited to see how God's going to use him and even his, his, his history and min- youth ministry here in this next season. Wow, great stuff. Thank you. Zach, once again, let me say thank you for multiple things. First of all, for being our interim pastor. Uh, It's a difficult time for a church to walk through because there's uncertainty. There's the the solid uh, relationships that we have are kind of gone and and people are wondering what's next. And you kept us focused on God, focused on on what he is doing. In fact, your sermon series on Exodus, it was about following after a leader who was Moses in uh, in that story that you took us through for several weeks, but you always brought us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And that was such a great, not just teaching, but it was a great movement for us as we work through this transition time. So thank you. Thank you. You're my friend and you will continue to be. I want to pray for you you. as we exit out from this table talk. So Father, I bless my friend and Lord, I pray that you will take Zach's heart and continue to make it the heart after yours. Lord, you have proven that you have made him your child and he has made you his Lord. Continue to do that. Lord, continue to multiply his work. Lord, I pray that a blessing on him that, Lord, he will see ministry explode like he never has before. Lord, I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about the quality of the ministry of the lives that he invests in. Lord, he is a man who understands the process of pouring in so that they can pour into others, so that they can pour into others. Lord, multiply that for generations and generations and generations of spiritual children, spiritual grandchildren, and on and on and on. So bless him and his family. Thank you for the impact that he's had on our church, for the impact that he's had on my life personally. Lord, we are grateful that everyone who watches this seeks to be transformed and to be different, even as we talked about uh, the, the Youth Leader Collective 
and we talked about what's happening in Zach's life. So thank you for that, Lord. You're a good God. Thanks for going before and behind us. Jesus, our Lord, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, and we'll say goodbye. Goodbye.